Are you too skinny for a BBL? Think that you don't have enough fat? Well, watch this video and I'll show you my philosophy about a skinny BBL. I use the fat in a little bit different ways for skinny BBL. So tune in, look forward to it. Hi, Dr. William, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Mat. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be talking about a skinny BBL. And you've heard me use the term before, skinny BBL, but I do get quite a few questions and I just kind of want to explain my philosophy to you about what a skinny BBL is. Obviously, the first thing is a skinny BBL is somebody who is thin and typically they have just enough fat in order to do a BBL. So you'll see here in, the, in this patient here that she's very flat in this area. And these are what patients will call the hip dips. This is really common and this is in fact totally normal and completely anatomical to have a dip here because your muscle ends in this location right here. And so as you move to the outside, this area is very flat and very hollow. So this is always the place where I will place fat at the very beginning to build out the hip. So skinny BBL patients who are very thin, I took this little uh, suture here and you can actually see her waist. Now normally we really don't measure waist. Uh, we don't do lipo to get a difference in, in, a, in a specific number. But if you look at her waist, I mean, this is just from side to side. I mean, her waist is very, very small, which is, is really pretty because when I do the liposuction here in this key area to begin the rounding to really emphasize the OG, then the real kind of where the rubber meets the road in terms of a skinny BBL is, you know, how do we partition the amount of fat that we get? So we have to prioritize, we have to have a strategy. And so this is what I go over with patients in the preoperative evaluation is to understand the patient's goals and then to anticipate how much fat I'm gonna have and what I can deliver because of course, expectations are so important to have before you have surgery and have realistic expectations and we come up with a plan so the plan is always first off to partition the fat that i have to build out the hip so if somebody comes in for a skinny bbl and they have fairly deep hip dips that's going to require a lot of fat in order to fill that hip dip out and in order to get the shape of the hip and so that's always my first priority when I'm dealing with a skinny BBL when I'm worried about my fat I always have to tell the patient listen the first priority has to be your hips we have to fill in the hip dip we have to get this shape because that's the whole you know convex part of the OG if I just take the fat and just make the butt bigger and I'm not filling out this hip to get the OG, that's not consistent with my philosophy. That's not what I, that's not what I do. That's not the look that I pre prefer. So depending on where your muscle ends, depending on the depth of the, the hip dip, depending on your leg shape, you know, all of that comes into play where I get an estimation of how much fat I'm gonna use. So you can see here that I've used all of the fat that she has. This little bit that you see here is just kind of liquid. It's not usable fat. But we've been able to take all of her fat, remove all of that by liposuction, and then I've used all of it except for just a little bit here at the end, which is really not very good fat. So I always make you know the maximal point of projection, these two line up here. And so projection here, projection here, but I build up the hip first and then I blend it into the leg so that this line comes down smoothly and it doesn't just stop here. So it blends into the leg. So that's the first priority. Now, if we have enough fat left over, then the second priority is now to impart volume to the butt. And so all of that volume is focused on filling in the rest of the butt in order to get the projection. Along with getting the projection in the same line as it's coming out from the newly built hip, we have to focus on this very, very important cuff area. So here you can see that the fat has been placed in the hip and now we have this nice convex line to the OG. This is really what I mean by prioritizing the fat and using the fat first to build up the hip and get a really 
really pretty OG shape. I usually find that a lot of patients with a skinny bubell will have a shorter cuff here because their butt kind of pops a little bit more and that's what she has. It's going to look beautiful when she's standing up because I've really filled this area in and she's got naturally a very deep groove here which is perfect because if you have this nice deep groove in this area and you get a good fill of fat in this area you really get that perky butt with a very sharp cuff. So always when patients are laying down this will look a little bit of an angle in here but when she's standing up because this is so nice and full and because this line is so well defined it's going to be a really perky butt. Even if I don't really have too much fat I will build up the hip as much as I can but I'll always leave a little bit where I get a, a little bit of the cuff because to me that's really important to make that butt pop. And for me I always start out with the hips because that's that arc of the OG that fits with this OG. The waist always comes into it in, in terms of thin. So skinny patients that start out skinny, they always end up being really thin because they're, they're starting out thin. And then it's just a matter of you know where else are we gonna put the fat to maximize the shape of the butt in terms of projection, in terms of cuff, in terms to you know transition from the lower back to the upper. So all of that kind of blends into it afterwards. But it's principally, foremost, always about the shape. And we always have to start by building out that hip and filling in the hip dips. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the little bell so you get notified. So I make a lot of these videos. I love to educate as part of my whole philosophy as being a plastic surgeon. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe.